Hi there, today we're going to go over a how to modify our Muroc Python Exercise 3.1 program, which is a improvement to the miles per gallon program. So the first thing that I recommend that you do working with any program is first to get an understanding of how the starting program works. So I've put this in my REPL. I'm going to go ahead and run it and make sure that I understand what's happening. Okay, so I've got my grading here on line 9 and it's asking me to enter miles driven. So I go ahead and pretend that I am driving 250 miles and I have used 10 gallons of gas. Nice easy calculations here. So it has calculated miles per gallon of 25, which seems correct to me. So I'm going to take a look here. I'm getting two inputs and storing them as floats, not integers, floats, even though I typed in integers. And then I have an if statement that says if miles driven is greater or sorry, less than or equal to zero, print miles driven must be greater than zero to please try again. L if gallons used is less than or equal to zero. Gallons used must be greater than zero. Please try again. Else I'm going to calculate the miles per gallon. So this is basically some validation that's happening here with regard to the input. So let's go ahead and see how that works. I'm going to run it again. So I'm going to put a zero and then like a negative five and miles driven must be greater than zero. So it asked me for both of those inputs, but then again, this is an if statement. So the first thing that it saw that was a true statement was that my miles driven was zero. So it's going to output this message and it's going to say bye and basically kick me out of the program. So what I want to do in, in, in this case, um, I can run it again and actually put in something and here with gallons of gas now it's it's going this is a false statement so it's skipping over this and starting with the next if statement and that is true so it's going to give me that message again kick me out of the system so our assignment here is to enhance the miles per gallon program so it lets the user repeat the entries and get the miles per gallon for more than one trip to do that use a while loop Okay, so a while loop is going to run constantly until something happens. Um, so the easiest way in this case is to, um, we don't want our while loop to start until after our greeting. So I'm going to go ahead and um, create something that says repeat repeat mpg equals yes. Okay, so I'm setting I'm setting a an a choice for the while loop. Okay, a default choice. So because we want this to run at first, we're going to put in a yes. And then after it runs, we're going to ask them at the end, "Hey, do you want to do this again?" So, um I'm going to automatically trick it by answering for them and I'm going to put while repeat mpg equals equals remember double equal signs it's comparison equals yes then I'm going to do this okay now because I'm putting that while loop in a while loop needs an indented code block so that's why you see this red line. It's a, if I was to run it right now, it's going to give me an indentation error. It's going to tell you exactly where that is. So uh, a lot of times it gives you the line um, after the line where the problem is, and that's what's happening in this case. So what I need to do is I need to take all of this right here and just indent it by, I selected it and I typed uh, push tab and it will go ahead and, and do everything over. Um, okay, so while repeat message or repeat mpg equals yes, do this. And then at the end of this, I want to ask a question that says repeat mpg equals input. 
um, would you like to enter uh, data for another trip? Y N. Okay, so it's going to ask that question and I'm going to go ahead and use a blank line at the beginning and a blank line at the end. Okay, I'm going to put some comments in here that says ask if they would like to repeat the, the program. Okay. All right, so what should happen is this entire block of code should run once because I'm setting that default. And then when it gets to the end, if they type in Y, then it will run this again. And actually, I think what I'm doing is going to say um, while repeat mpg dot lower equals Y just in case they enter capital Y. All right, let's try this. So here we go. I'm going to do my 250, 10. Would you like to enter? I'm going to test it with a capital Y. And there we go. We're going to do it again. Um, here's my lowercase y. And I'm going to say no. And then it's going to say bye. So excellent. You can see how this has definitely improved our user experience by using that while loop. And this is typically considered like a game loop you will see this frequently in our programs that we write so that we don't have to keep kicking the user out and having them um, redo something. Let's see what happens now if we put in wrong information. So if I put in a zero, um, it gives me the error. Would you like to enter data again? So see this this way, it doesn't, um, doesn't make me, force me to restart the program. Okay. Let me just answer that. Click no. Okay, so we have completed step one. Check. All right, now the next step of this is modify the program so it gets the cost of a gallon of gas as another entry from the user and validate this entry before using it in your calculations. If all three entries are valid, calculate the total gas cost and the cost per mile and display the results on the screen. All right, so basically all we're doing here and again, my recommendation when whenever you go through these exercises is you take them step by step and try not to stress too much about it. Once you've completed that first step, great. Um, so we, we want to do this first part. Gets the cost of a gallon of gas. So here we're getting all of our inputs. So I'm just going to go ahead and add another one. So cost per gallon and I'm going to model it exactly the same way that I've done it here. Enter cost per gallon of gas. Okay, and there's there really isn't any reason to test this yet because I'm not doing anything with it. So I'm going to basically just modify this statement because I need to validate it exactly the same way we validated everything here. So I'm going to create another elif and another comparison. So cost per gallon less than or equal to zero and I'm going to do the same thing. Print. Oops. I'll go in this way. Print. Uh, cost per gallon of gas must be greater than zero. Please try again. Okay. Actually, these if statements, I'm going to get rid of one of these tabs because they only need one. And I like to keep them looking good. Okay. All right. So the next thing that I need to do is I need to output. A, I need to do some calculations here. So let's see. Uh, it validates this entry before using it in your calculations. All right. If all three entries are valid, calculate the total gas and the cost per mile and display the results on the screen. So I currently just have 
miles per gallon and I need to calculate the total gas cost. So how can we, this is where we're going to do some math, right? Let's think about this. How can we calculate how much gas cost? So let's, let's do a new variable called total gas cost equals. So we want to use the gallons used times the cost per gallon, correct? So we're going to do that. So gallons, let me just make sure I'm using the correct things here. Gallons used, gallons used times cost per gallon. Okay, and then I want to, let's round it and we'll round it for one. Now we have calculated the total gas cost. Let's see if this works. I've got print miles per gallon, print total gas cost. And come out here. This is kind of, uh, what did we call this? Total gas cost. All right, I'm gonna run this part. I still need to do the cost per mile but I want to run this and make sure this works. Okay, so miles driven, I'm going to use some real simple numbers. 110 gallons of gas, and I'm going to say $2 per gallon. Okay, so miles per gallon is 10. Total gas cost is 20, and that makes a lot of sense. So there we go, I'm going to click no. Uh, let me go ahead and change this from a 1 to a 2 since we're dealing with dollars. Um, I guess I don't want it just to say 20.0. Okay, so now I need to do cost per mile. So I need to calculate this cost per mile. Now, cost per mile is going to be the total cost of the gas, so $20 here in my case, divided by the miles driven. Okay, so I'm going to do that. So round total gas cost divided by miles driven. And again, I'm going to put a 2 in here make sure everything looks good. You don't technically need these spaces here. I could technically make this just go like that, but I thought this looks a little bit better. I can see what I've got here. Okay, so cost per mile, and then I'm going to add this in my output, and that's going to be cost per mile. And let me, I'm just literally spacing this out to whatever the one I'm top of it was cost per mile. All right, well, let's see how this goes. All right, let's run it. All right, again, I'm going to keep my numbers really simple. 110 gallons of gas, $2. So $10 or 10 miles per gallon, $20 of gas and 20 cents. Would I like to enter data for another trip? No. I'm going to run this one more time, test it with something a little bit more uh, not as nice. So 180 miles, 10.5, and 2.55. Okay, so here I'm rounding, and because my other numbers were perfect, they didn't have any dollars or cents, that's why my round to two decimal points isn't coming out. This, this one with the not so nice numbers will take those two um, decimal points into consideration during the rounding, but if it's just a 26, it's just going to show up as 26.0 because it doesn't really make sense to have it say 26.00. Um, later on, we will learn how to format uh, our numbers so that we can force them to to have like a dollar sign and, and cents, but we're not there yet. So. 
Okay, so these numbers all look good. So I feel confident that we have uh, met this. Let me just do one more test here and make sure if I don't put anything in the cost per gallon of gas that I get that message, and I do. So there you go. Hope that helped. Thanks. Bye.